I photo destiny down this V Collins Vir 351 navigation receiver so it is a compact and self-contained device part of a Collins range of avionics for mostly light aircraft the Collins microline it is from the late 70s I believe Uh, so we will have a look inside in order to see how it is made. So it is uh, all integrated uh, navigation receiver with a provision to be interconnected with uh, other devices of the same uh, range. So the uh, information, technical information is uh, easy to find about these devices because they are very common. I was able to find the uh, installation manual with a pinout for the power supply. And as you will see, it will power on. Here we are, and I can select the frequency. Here you can notice once of the display is dim and should need replacement. In this mode, it will show nothing because it is not connected to the rest of the system. But the uh, navigation feature, uh, receiver feature, must be working right now. You can see I can select the frequency and very nice uh, incandescent seven segment displays. So if you want to know the pinout for this device, it requires 14 volts. The power supply goes to pin 20 and the ground goes to pin 21 on the connector here. Okay. So here at the back you have the uh, manufacturer plate, big serial number as it is a very common uh, device. And I got this one for only one euro on eBay, which is quite nice. So it is made of uh, apparently uh, several sections. So first I have covers here I can undo. And they are just uh, clip in place, no screws for these ones, quite uh, unusual, like so, it will come off. So first uh, view at the electronics, Kemet uh, seal capacitors, old school RCA chips on Motorola, trim pot, and it is the power supply uh, converter, apparently this board as it is written right here. Then we have here one section with a whole bunch of uh, adjustments. I will unscrew this real quick. So of course, as it is Collins, we have imperial screws here. Again, clips. Okay, here obviously we have some kind of a card cage with two circuit boards. I am not sure if they will collaborate or if we will be able to pull them. Oh, maybe, yes, actually. Try not to damage anything. But it looks like it is possible to pull it. This card, this circuit board, a little bit stuck. As you can see, the cables are permanently connected here. A very old school uh, total long caps. Custom uh, Collins ship here apparently. I have no idea of what this does, and there is no information specifically written on this board. Ah, the lock PS board, okay. Dead code of 1979 on this ship. Oops, focus. Excuse me. And yes, a lot of adjustments, little uh, doctor here. Old school uh, carbon capacitors, uh, resistors, excuse me. 
So, with this we lock PS board with a whole bunch of permanently attached cables. I am not sure why they did not use uh, connectors on the circuit boards, because if you need to replace the circuit board, obviously, it will be quite annoying. This board should lift up so quite easily. There is a hole in this one to grab it, only on one side, and it's, it's quite weird, actually. Why they did not provide? Uh, I have really focused problems today. Not sure why. Are we good? Okay. Can I zoom? Or maybe I will do like this. It will be better. This is the uh, VOR converter board. Ah, I'm not sure what is happening with my camera today. Here we have more of the exact same stuff. Okay. So, other side here. The main rotary selector. several stage wafer switch and here quite uh, how you doing look at this here is a function to activate when pulling this button but it is done with a regular switch and just a little bit of a metal piece bended like this quite uh, not impressive. Here we have the other side of the uh, cards. I will I did uh, just uh, pull on the wire looms like this. So nothing in particular in this section. Sorry for the focus problems by the way. There are days like this it happens. I will put this back in later. Here we have a large compartment on the side with a number of screws. So let's see what we have in here. Okay, one circuit board actually uh, upside down. You can see here a lot of uh, filter assemblies going to the main uh, connector. So some kind of uh, capacitive pass-through to fil filter noise. This board is the navigation synthesizer. So like this. Obviously here a lot of uh, 74 series chips, logic chips. So it must decode the nav navigation data or something like this. No idea, actually. Little shaded uh, can here uh, must be the uh, receiver head because. Uh, Coax wire is going directly to the main antenna plug. And you can see here more of these uh, filter assemblies. Okay, other side, only these three screws on this one, luckily enough. Navigation receiver audio. Okay. And we have here. This board is not the same color than the other ones for some reason. It is uh, white material and not green. Well, green uh, solder mask of the other ones at least. Uh, obviously, uh, radio receiver stuff here. 
again the very old school Tottenham Caps. Nice uh, piezo technology incorporated uh, crystal oscillator here. Maybe it is uh, organized. Uh, only well, three or four connections to it, not a lot. And you can see old school electronics. No conformal coating on these boards, by the way. And you can see the construction is uh, it is made of several pieces of solid aluminium. Okay, I will put this back together and we will have a look at the front section. So, about this front part, uh, I had a hard time figuring out the correct size for the set screws of Allen key because, weirdly enough, it is a metric size of Allen key of 1.3 mm, which is a weird size for metric, but it is in my metric collection of Allen keys. Here, I believe this button just pulls out. There is no set screw on this one, so it should come off by just pulling on it. Yes, like so. And I have more set screws here. I want to see these uh, displays, but they are exactly if I have one in, in stock. And could eventually replace a bad one. It would be nice. So there is a lot of these items available on eBay at very random prices. But uh, the ones for parts are usually uh, below $50. came alone without the rack to host it in the aircraft or anything else, wire harness or anything, just the device by itself. Okay, this is coming off, and you can see the front PCB. Obviously, we have quite a ship uh, cover here, plastic cover. We have obviously the most probably the decoders for the displays. Five times the same display. One uh, little bulb here for the waypoint indicator in the front plate. Oh, here we have uh, the attachment device to the slide in rack or um, drawer or if, tray. More exactly, you will turn this and you will secure this screw and it will secure the device in the tray. And we have the displays here where the model number I do not believe I have any one in stock because they are actually not sure if it's shown camera, but they are made in Japan. There is a logo here I do not recognize. Model number here. A little bit bent pins here. And it is all piece of glass over it. And the little incandescent displays. Well, filaments. Okay. So I will reinsert this. I will maybe rip over it another time without the front uh, panel so you will see exactly what it looks like. Ah. Of course, my selector is not in the correct position to do it. And I did lose a circlip here. I will figure it out when installing the cover. Okay. So this one is actually very dim, so maybe this is an adjustment for the display. Not sure, but there is here a, yes, photocell. 
that will adjust the brightness of the display. Ah yes, it is. Uh, for the display setting and you can see this one is almost dead. Not sure why it will do it, but uh, also where the nine number six and nine you can see where there is not the uh, top and bottom uh, segment. Okay, so one nice uh, piece of uh, low cost relatively low cost avionics for my collection at least on that one euro it is always interesting so thanks for watching bye bye